Whether you just bought the game today, or you've been playing since launch, I am here to show you 40 advanced tips that may help you and your friends play the game to the best of your abilities. And these tips will range from PvP to PvE, ship combat, gunplay, etc. And by the end of this video, I hope you learned something new, and if you want me to go in depth on any specific tips, I will be glad to do it in a separate video. The first thing I'm going to bring up is cancelling the slow animation that happens whenever you miss a target while sword lunging. This can put you in the worst situation possible, especially if you're on a galleon like I am here, and there's four enemies on this ship. If you haven't killed any of them yet, you are practically guaranteed to die. And a simple way to counter this is we're grabbing onto something. Simple as that. Grab onto a cannon, grab onto the anchor, and same thing with the wheel. That's simple. Another sword tip I'm going to bring up is bunny hopping. I don't really see a lot of people do it for some reason. I mean, I see people, you know, bunny hop here and there, but not as much as they really should be doing it to avoid getting hit by people that they're fighting. Let's say I'm by this wheel, right? And I spawn back here. If I turn around and run at you like that, that's just a straight line for me to shoot you, right? Or an enemy to shoot you. It's not hard to do that, and they will most likely kill you. But let's say I spawn here. I go around, I bunny hop to the right, and I sword. I have a higher chance of killing the person that's shooting at me than I did before. Another sort of longer tip is which scenarios should you be using double gun and which weapons should you be using? Now, I'd say if you're on a galleon and you are confident in your aim, I would most likely use pistol sniper just so you can stay farther away because you know there's a lot of room for you to move around. There's a lot of areas to hide behind and you can easily shoot people while hiding. And you know, you're not like in a really confined space like you are in a sloop. Now, if you're on a sloop, I would use a blunderbuss. You're just on such a confined small space, there's not really anywhere to hide if an enemy is coming at you or hide behind in case someone's shooting at you and you just want to kill them quickly and you don't really have much distance to put between you and them. So I would use blunder sniper, you know, blunder pistol, blunder sword, and just make sure you have a blunder. On a brigantine is where it becomes more complex because there's a long space up here and then down here it's really confined so really it's just whichever weapon combo you like the most out of all of them. I would recommend going because really any, any weapon combo would work on this ship. Now, this is a tip I don't see a lot of people using despite how easy it is to do, and that is called X-Canceling. So when you shoot your weapon, it has a knockback sort of recoil animation before it starts reloading, and the easiest way to fix this is by X-Canceling. Now, the same keybind you use to put away your weapon, whether that be B on controller, F or E on keyboard and mouse, if you press this twice quickly after shooting your gun, it'll cancel that animation and instantly start reloading. Just like that. If you do this with any weapon, do it with a sniper, any weapon. Even a blunderbuss or, I mean, you can't really do it with a sword, but that's obvious. You can also do this with sprint cancelling, too. Now, sprint cancelling is just like X cancelling, except you, know, you do it with sprinting, obviously. And this time, you ADS, and the second you shoot, right at, you can do it at the same time and it'll still really work. You sprint. Just like that. You see how quick that is? It goes on that quickly. It goes with the sniper, too. One. Too. Although the sniper, it isn't as good because it's very slow with the reload animation, but you can still, you can do it with any weapon aside from the sword. Sword doesn't really do anything. Now this tip is more advanced and it takes a bit of practice. I it's just like engraved in my memory at this point, so I can't really like explain it, like how to practice it really, other than just doing it over and over again. So let's say this this pot right here, right? It's a person. It's a mean person. They're shit talking you. You want to kill them? Who wouldn't want to kill them, right? So shoot up, you ADS, you shoot, sprint, swap, ADS, shoot. That should be on screen, I should make that in text at the very top. Probably might not make sense, but I can assure you, it will make sense when you start practicing it. Now, this tip is more of a, you should know this, rather than something you can practice, and it's hit reg. Hit reg is an odd issue. I don't actually come across that much anymore, but in the instance that you do, it can be very, very annoying to deal with. And really, the only way I can tell you to counter this is just act like every shot you're going to hit isn't going to count. Now, a while ago, Ray removed wall banks from this game, and there are still a few spots on the sloop where you can wall bang people through. One of those being these little flaps right here that you can close on the sloop. You can shoot someone through both of these, and it will do damage. Another one being the wheel. And then back here, too, you can... I mean, you can shoot through this, obviously, but in case you hit that, it'll still do damage to the person up there on the wheel, or sitting up by the anchor. Now, this tip is more of a, a sad tip, you know? It's a tip that everyone hates coming across. It's just... The sword block doesn't work, you know? It... It's a small bug, but it's annoying. It can be dependent on your ping, the game's server. It, you really have no control over it at all. But, you know, let's say the enemy is the bell, right? And I'm deflecting. They could be here, here, or here. And they could be sorting me, and it'll go through my block. Which, 
you know, the f I don't understand. I don't know how to explain that to make it make sense, but it just it just happens. You know, people will you'll be blocking. People will try and hop around you. You'll track them and block. You know, wherever they're hopping, left and right. You know, behind everything, and they'll still be hitting you because it's client side for them. This tip may come as a no-brainer to some, but I cannot tell you how many times I've seen people using like bone crusher weapons to take up the entire screen when they're ADSing or shooting, etc. And that is that some weapon skins are better than others. As you can see, I can't really see the target if I'm aiming up here. Now if I switch to the Kraken Eye Reach, I can see much better. And again, this is just, you know, preference. You can use whatever weapons you want. You can use the biggest, the smallest, any you want. I'm not telling you not to use weapons. I'm just saying that if you want to see the most on your screen while shooting or fighting people, I would recommend not using huge weapons as it will help you in fights. Now for the final weapon tip is the two combos of weapons I would recommend whether if you are a double gunner or if you are not a double gunner. The first one being blunder snipe. Blunder if you want to blunder someone's up close in your face and sniper if you need to kill someone's far away or a little farther away than a blunder. And if you're not a double gunner you're a chad sword user I'd use sword and sniper. You know, obviously sword for up close and sniper for far away fights. The first tip for the ship slash ship fighting section is cannon aim. Now, cannon aim can be very simple or it can be very complex, and I'm here to make it much more complex than you already thought it was. One factor that should be considered when aiming cannons is the waves. As you can see here at this island, the waves are very calm, and if I were to shoot, there's very little rocking, little to none at all. As you can see, it's, it's very easy to shoot with you when you're on island waves. Whereas in this clip, the ocean waves aren't actually too bad compared to island waves, but usually they would be much worse, requiring you to angle the cannons more than you need to here. And as you can see here, after a little bit of angling, I find the right angle, and I end up hitting a keg on that galleon and sinking it because of it. This is a tip that I would say the general population of this game knows, but I feel like I should just include it anyways, because I feel like it will help a lot of people that, you know, want to get better PvP and want to improve the PvP skills, and that's that some ship skins, you know, cannons, sail, I wouldn't say wheel, maybe wheel, for all I know, are indeed better than others. Now, for example, these Reaper cannons, now these aren't the worst out there, obviously, they're not too bad to aim with, but these, compared to these, is a mile of a change. Now, these are, these are pretty beefy. These are some pretty beefy cannons. I would not recommend using these, but what I would recommend using are these. Now, I understand what you're thinking. You know, I want to rep the, the cool cannons I've got, and I understand that. You can go ahead and do that. I'm just saying that when you come across a ship and you attempt to aim at them with a cannon with a brick rather than a circle, it's going to become much more difficult to see things and shoot things than you realize. Same thing with sails. Default sails are fine. The sails are really fine in general. They're not really too big of a difference, but I would say that if you're on a galleon, sails can become a really big issue. As you can see, I can can see literally nothing straight ahead of me there could be a ship there could be an island there could be a, a goddamn megalodon i'm not gonna see that with these sails and let's say you don't have enough gold or you don't have the combinations to unlock certain you know sails that are shredded that can give you more vision just a simple tip that ties in with this one would be raise them up a little this will not hinder your speed enough to make it so you won't catch any ship you're chasing if you have wind or it won't affect any situation you're in to the point where you cannot catch a ship you're chasing if you were going to catch them in the first place now this tip is probably one of the most helpful ones i'm going to list here simply for people who want to get out of spawn camping or for the people that want to sin and spawn camp whether that be for supplies or for other not very nice reasons you know any reason you need to know the spawn locations on every boat i am here to give them to you That is all the spots on the galleon. These are all the spots on a brigantine. And all the spawn points on the sloop. And that is all of them. The next tip that ties in with ship and ship PvP is reverse ladder guarding. Now, reverse ladder guarding is very hard to showcase properly, so in order for me to show how I want to show it, I'm going to play it in slow motion. Now, let's pretend that there's an enemy guarding you when you're trying to board, right here. Now, as you're going up the ladder, you want to make sure you have your blunder out, and this is a very fast sequence. Press the button that makes you grab on the ladder, you want to ADS your blunder, shoot it, and then right after you shoot it, you want to swap to your other weapon. You're going to do that same thing with the sniper, you're going to jump off, ADS, shoot, and then you climb up. This next tip is quite the long one. It is how to avoid enemies using movement on different ship types. 
Now the first evasive maneuver I use on a sloop when I'm being chased by an enemy, let's say by one that spawns right here, is by running back here and going behind the map table. It usually leaves them right in front of you, able to shoot them or sword them per se, and gives you much more time to attack them than time for them to attack you. The next evasive maneuver is right around that area as well, and it is grabbing the ladder through the bottom of the boat. How you do that is by getting on top of the ammo chest, going up here, and grabbing the ladder. Now the next ship that I'm going to be going over is the Brigantine. Now the Brigantine is where it becomes a little bit more complicated. Because as you can see here, there isn't really many spaces to hide behind up here, at least on top of the deck. Um, below deck too, there really isn't many places other than, you know, running around the brig, or maybe running behind the map table or maybe we're also running behind the stairs, but this gets you cornered along with the other ones. So really the only tip I have for the Brigantine is to just run. That's about it, just run. Run, run, run. Now if I had to list one evasive maneuver for the Galleon that I would recommend every single person watching this video do more often, like as much as possible when being attacked by somebody, whether you're on someone's boat or someone's on your boat attacking you, is this. Yeah, it may seem simple, but I can assure you that this maneuver alone has gotten me out of so many death situations in this game it has saved me countless times i don't know why it works but it does and i recommend that every single person do it the next tip will be about usefulness of storage crates around the boat as you can see here i have a fruit crate next to me and this is mostly in case someone boards my boat lowers my anchor and potentially hits me and goes downstairs waiting for me i have food here i can eat in case i didn't have food on me already as you can see here i have a wood crate which i can use for all the holes in the back of my boat so i don't have to run down here get planks and then run back up, I can just grab and go. I have a cannonball crate right next to my cannons. Pretty self-explanatory when I run out of cannonballs, I don't have to run into those. I can just get cannonballs right out of here. Storage crate placement doesn't really matter. I have my next harpoon, so whenever I harpoon a barrel or other storage crates, I can siphon the supplies out of them. But nonetheless, storage crate placements are a preference. You can, I've seen people have cannonball crates right next to their cannons. I've seen people have storage crates right next to their cannonballs, maybe down here where they can't actually like pick them up. I've had, I see people with wood crates maybe down here on the stairs. Uh, I don't really see people with fruit crates, but this is mostly preference if you like having food, you know, around you all the time. And uh, yeah, it's just preference. Now this next tip revolves around what you should do when you're in a bad spot in a fight. And as you can see here, I'm masked down. I'm running out of cannonballs. I'm running out of planks alone. I have plenty of holes in the bottom of my boat, I am filling up quick, and this tip I actually learned from Cynical, and it's that you shouldn't be repairing your boat, you should mainly be focusing on your mast. And this can go for any boat, but that was mostly for solo sloopers. And really what I should be doing here is raising my mast instead of bucketing my water because all I'm doing is prolonging the inevitable of him lighting me up even more with cannonballs. As you can see here with cursed cannonballs, he eventually puts me to sleep. And if I had raised my mast and repaired it, I would be out of there already. So really what you should be doing in a fight, if I had to nail this tip down to one specific point, is focus on your mast. If your masts are down, get them up and get moving. Now this next tip you will see a lot in NAL, official tournaments, like Sea of Champions, etc. And that is, what role do you bring to your crew? Now a crew usually consists of four good roles whenever you come across them. First you have the helm, the person that spends all their time helming, giving out directions, you know, to pull sails, lower sails, etc. You have main cannon, the person that spends most of their time cannoning, of course, that's in the name. You have bilge, which is the main repair whenever the ship is taking damage. And you have boarder, the person that boards all the time. The person that slays out whenever they board a boat, that's your boarder right there. In NAL, you also can have a fifth role, which is flex, which is where the person can do every single role, maybe not to the best of the ability of the people that can do it already, but they can do everything if needed. An easy way to incorporate these roles into your gameplay or game style with you and your friends, you know, anyone you play with, is to just figure out what everyone likes doing the most and what they're best at. You know, if you have a friend that loves boarding all the time, make him your board. Do you have a friend that loves repairing for some odd reason? Make him your bilge. If you have a friend that likes giving out orders and driving the wheel, then make that guy your helm. And if that sounds too sweaty or too complicated for you, I completely understand. But what I would tell you, if that's the case, is just do what you like doing the most on the boat. Whether it be driving, shooting, boarding, repairing, whatever you like, do it. I can assure you, if you get better at it, you will become very good at this game. Trust me. Now this is a really short tip, but it is when to send out boarders during an intense fight. Let's say you're in a fight with a really good crew, right? You're demassing them, they're demassing you, you're blunder bombing them, they're blunder bombing you, you're killing them, they're killing you, etc. Over and over again, it's really not going anywhere. My best advice for you is send out boarders when they're in a bad spot, not you. I've seen so many times where people are in a horrible spot, their masks are down, they're on fire, they're about to be boarded, and they shoot out boarders to go counter the galleon and get them distracted, or go counter the other boat that's shooting them, right? That puts you in a worse position than you were in before, and I can assure you, if you just wait a little longer, those boarders 
we'll finish the fight. My telltale sign of when to send out borders would be when they're demasted and they aren't shooting back, right? They're either bilging, they're repairing something to get them distracted. That's when I'd go out so they don't expect you coming. Now this tip is probably my biggest tip out there for my solo sloopers and it's how to deal with bigger crews and bigger ship types. As a solo slooper it may become really difficult to fight bigger crews as you come across them because some crews can be really experienced, some can be really bad so you don't really know what to expect whenever you're fighting a crew. And my biggest tip for a galleon is whenever you're in a, a naval battle with them, shooting cannons at them, shooting cannons at you, when you're in their broadside all four cannons faced at you, blunder bomb them, fire bomb them, shoot cannonballs at their cannons, everything to get them off their cannons will put you in a safe spot and then when you're behind them or in front of them light them up shoot lowers do the same thing over and over again right you do not want them shooting you with four cannons i can assure you you will almost lose every single time now for a brigantine you really just need to match their speed right the brigantine is going to be extremely fast extremely mobile it's almost like a sloop just with a second sail it's going to be really really quick and you can actually take advantage of this right if you're in wind side by side with them they're going to take off ahead of you slowly go faster and faster and you can actually cut behind them and chain shot them and take out their mass and then light them up because even if it's two cannons you are still at a very big disadvantage with two people against one and now coming against other sloops, this is where it gets easy, right? I'm just going to include this anyways. What you need to do to a sloop to basically win the fight if they aren't really good, you know, and can't repair themselves quick enough to get back up is chain shot them. Once they're chained, blunder bomb them, fire bomb them, everything at the top of their boat or top deck, right? You don't need to shoot lowers yet. You just need to kill them and then light them up. So that way, if they do spawn back in time to save their boat, they are almost sunk. The water's at the map table. They're getting hit by blunder bombs. They're dying. They're everything, right? Everything is just caving down on them. That's it. My first tip for PvE tips is going to be ranking world events from worst to best and I'm going to be pretending that the crew that's doing them is a full galleon. And that starts off my list with the worst world event you could do for the loot and the amount of time it takes is the Ashen Winds. I know what you're thinking, the Ashen Winds takes no time to complete and that's the point. They made it so short because the loot it gives you is trash. You might as well do a gold hoarder vault and it'll give you practically double the amount of loot and Ashen Winds it gives you. It's practically pointless and I would not recommend doing it unless you just want to cycle through the world events to get another one. And on to the second worst world event is the Skull Fort. Now the Skull Fort can take actually quite a long time to do depending on how competent you and your crew are. For the little amount of loot it gives you, I would recommend not doing this again unless you're trying to cycle through all the world events and get rid of it. Now, this next world event is actually pretty good for the amount of loot it gives you. It gives you a lot of chests, so if you are wanting to level up your gold order, I recommend doing it. But the only issue is that it kind of isn't in the game right now, and that is the Skeleton Fleet. Now, I can't really explain why it is in the game, but when it does eventually come back, I would definitely recommend doing this, even though it may take a while, depending on your crew size. It gives you a lot of loot, and it's definitely worth it. And leaving the second to best world event on this list is the Fort of Fortune. Now the Fort of Fortune takes a very, very long time, really not even depending on your crew type. There's so many waves of skeletons and even bosses alone, it will take you forever. But if you're looking to level up your Athena and don't feel like doing Veil Voyages or anything else, I would definitely recommend doing this because the amount of Athena loot it gives you is a lot. It gives you an Athena, two ancient kegs of black powder, and it gives you a bunch of trinkets, then all the little the crates and stuff. It gives you a lot of loot that I would definitely recommend doing this. But you're going to get contested a lot. This is basically like an Athena for the damned. You're going to get contested by everybody else who wants to do this. Now, some people may not consider this a world event, but I'm just going to go ahead and consider it one. It can happen here and there. You know, it, it happens in the world. It's an event. It's a world event. All right, we're going with it. That would be the Fort of the Damned. Now, Fort of the Damned, I've completed it in under 15 minutes of force, so really it doesn't take that much time to do. If you have four people just one blundering the skeletons when they spawn right here, whether that be with tridents or, you know, blunderbusses, obviously, it can go by so quick, and the amount of loot it gives you is very good. Also, a quick tip, the Reaper chests you get from this fort, if you bury them, the server will act like there aren't any in the world, and it'll give you more in here, because I think there's like a limit of like four or six golden Reaper chests in the in this, in this server, you know, at a time, and if you bury them, it'll act like they're not existent so you can just keep stacking and keep getting the golden reaper ones instead of getting the stupid you know 15 doubloon reaper chest that nobody wants you know now this next tip revolves around the best voyages for each training company the first one being the gold hoarders now although i'm not in the right outpost the best voyages for gold hoarder are devil's roar vaults there's like maybe two to three vaults in the devil's roar and if you stack keys you are guaranteed to get the same one multiple times providing easy loot stacking now for the next training company the order of souls Best Voyage for Order Souls is the fleets. They're very easy to do. All the supplies you use on them, you get back. And compared to these voyages, they're far, far better. Now, Merchant used to be horrendously bad to do. It was a pain. 
made my brain melt just selling chickens and pigs for hours every day trying to get 50 to get PL. But now, merchant is ungodfully easy. All you have to do is shipment voyages, and if you want to just go full sweaty merchant tryhard, you can stack these commodities and sell them at every outpost, and you will skyrocket your merchant rep. Trust me. Now for Athena's Fortune, there used to be a lot of debate around which voyage was the best for Athena's Fortune, whether it be the normal Athena, the Ashton Athena, Thieves Haven runs, but now, by a long mile, it is Legend of the Veil. And just like the Order of Souls voyages, all the supplies you use on Legend of the Veil, you get back times maybe two or three. They're really good for supplies too, along with getting really good Athena loot that will skyrocket you from whatever Athena rep you are, all the way up to 30. And a quick tip, um, from what I've heard, is that it takes 50 of these to get you from 20 to 30. So just keep that in mind. This next tip revolves around a website called Merfolk Lullaby. As you can see here on the website, you can see the storm tracker where you can see where the storm has been and where it's going. You can also see the trade routes for Merchant. You can see Plunder, Dagger 2 Sanctuary, Galleon's Grave, and Marl's Peak and Ancient. And there's a lot on this website, lots of things to go into, uh, more things than I can even count to be honest. And it's, it's a great website and I definitely recommend using it. Now for this next step, I put some fort gameplay in the background just to give reference to what I'm talking about, and that would be different types of skeletons and the best way to kill each of them. Now the first type of skeleton is the default one. You can kill them any way you want. You know, there's no effective way really to kill them. It's just anything works. Now the next skeletons I'm going to be talking about are plant skeletons. They take less damage from guns and take more damage from sword. The next skeletons are golden skeletons. If you throw fire or water on them, they will like mold and become really slow and take like, I think it's triple or quadruple the amount of damage they normally do. The next skeleton is the shadow skeleton. If you're doing a fort and it's nighttime and the wave of skeleton pops up with these, the really only way you can attack them is by flashing your lantern. I think also using a flare works now too if you shoot up a white flare in the sky. And the last type of skeleton, I'll just be listening because why not, is the captain type of skeleton. And these captains can range from normal captains to, you know, Ashen Winds bosses, etc. And they take damage from practically anything. And nothing really makes them weaker, except you can throw fire on them, which will do damage over time. But it doesn't really do a lot, and I wouldn't say it's really worth it. This next tip revolves around fortresses and the quickest way to complete them if you are stacking them, or if you just want to complete them in general. And that is the distance between Ancient Gold and Brinestone. Now, let's say you start at Old Brine, right? You go straight south down to Old Brinestone, you complete it, you got all the loot on your boat, you go over Ancient Gold, same thing, complete it, all the loot on your boat. By the time this is completed, this one's reset, you can do it again. Go to this one, do it again, this one's reset, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. You don't have to go from Old Brinestone to Ancient all the way up to Imperial Crown, all the way up, and I don't even know where this one's at. All the way over to Royal Crest, all the way over here, you know, etc. You don't have to go around the entire map, you can just go back and forth six squares. That simple. This is more of a question and answer sort of tip, and it's should you do treasuries and should you do shrines? Now, the answer to shrines is no, I would not do a shrine. The puzzles that you have to do and how long it takes to do them for the minimal amount of loot it gives you is not worth it unless you need to do commendations. Treasuries, I would recommend doing because they actually give you quite a bit of loot and it can be completed really, really quickly if you're solo. See, but the only issue with treasuries though is that they are really far apart. There's three of them. You go this way, that way, down here. Then you have to go all the way up here, back to this one, over here again, down. Like, it's it's basically a triangle, and it's a really, really, really big triangle. So if your goal is to stack treasuries, I would not recommend doing it. If anything, I'd incorporate treasuries, you know, some fortresses, maybe even a shrine, if it's, you know, you know how to complete it really quickly, into your route, and you'll get a lot more loot than just circling around with these three treasuries. Trust me. This next tip revolves around a tall tale called Lords of the Sea. This tall tale is the one where you know you just take down the big mermaid statues and sink all the ghost ships until you get to the main, you know, fortress or everyone to call it. Only thing is, you can just kill these ghost ships over and over and over again as much as you want and just stack up those supplies for as long as you need for however long you want. This next tip revolves around the Kraken, as you can see, and it is that if you cast your fishing rod before getting sucked by the Kraken, it'll cancel the Kraken, sucking you, I guess. That sounds so weird, but you know what I mean. And you won't get sucked up. I don't know how it works, but it works. Now this next tip revolves around the Heart of Fire Tall Tale, and it is that if you vote this Tall Tale down, it'll cancel any ocean crawlers, skeletons, anything like that spawning on you while you're doing a voyage or you're on an island. Now normally, an entire formidable army of ocean crawlers will spawn on you. But this Tall Tale, if it's voted down, will easily cancel that and none of them will spawn on you. Now, the final tip for the PvE section is going to be the top three ways to get gold. That's whether you like doing PvP or PvE. Either way, I got a solution for both. Now, for PvP, I would recommend just hopping for Reaper 5s, for Athena Emissaries, for, you know, loaded Emissary tables, stuff like that. Um, I would really only recommend portal hopping if you have a lot of loot or if you don't feel like losing your grade 5 flag. Because if you have four people hopping on separate servers, you know, you'll find something much quicker than just all of you hopping in the same boat. 
And one of the quickest ways to make gold doing PvE is by far Devil's Roar Vaults. Now I've already gone over Devil's Roar Vaults and how they are the best voyages for gold order by far. And if you do these on like Community Day or Double Golden Glory, you will see how much money you make and how quickly your gold order level levels up if you're not already 75. And the final way would be stack world events. Now the emissary I would recommend going is Reapers. And I know you're thinking, I'm gonna get targeted, why would I wanna go Reapers? And I completely understand that, but I can assure you that going Reapers is much better than going, you know, Gold Hoarder, Order Souls, Merchant, because you'll get times 2.5 for all of your loot instead of like a chest or a skull. Now this section is just going to consist of tips that I didn't include to the last parts, maybe because I forgot them or because they maybe didn't fit the best that I wanted them to. Either way, these tips could consist of more PvE, PvP tips. There's going to be tips that I feel like should be mentioned, honorable mentions basically. Now this next tip is just going to consist of movement. As you can see here, I am jumping a lot, right? This may seem like a good way to avoid getting hit. I'm just gonna let you know if you're jumping a lot, it's basically putting you as an easier target because I mean, if you're going against keyboard and mouse people, most of them are gonna be able to track you while you're jumping you know, or just predict where you're gonna fall when you hit the ground. Whereas if you were, let's say strafing left and right, you know, AD strafing, you can even see my shadow. It may not look too difficult to hit, but I can assure you that on land doing this over this, you know, spam jumping is gonna make you a lot harder to hit. And you know, tying this in with maybe even sword hopping like I covered earlier, you know, start hopping left and right and stuff like that it will make you much much harder to hit like i can't even hit people doing this and you know i'm a i'm a sea thief's god so that's to say something right and this is tying in with that tip too let's say you're in the water right and most people that i fight in the water don't move a lot they just stand still or move left to right like, really still like this but let's say the opponent's way out there right and they have a sniper and they're sniping at you the best way to avoid getting hit is by swimming straight downwards, like strafing like you were on land, right? Moving your mouse or your controller analog stick and going left and right and left and right over and over and over again until you get close enough to shoot them yourself. But yeah, in the water, strafe left and right. You know, you can go up and down all around. You know, you can do circles, anything just to avoid you getting hit when trying to get closer to the enemy and kill them. The anchor is off center. Ignore the last one. The only difference between Adventure and a Pirate's Life is that Pirate's Life spawns you by the Tall Tale Tent. There is no difference other than that. There's no server difference, nothing. It only spawns you by the tent. That's it. Now, as you can see here, I'm in the Emporium. None of what you're thinking. Breeze? I'm not buying anything from here. That's okay. You don't have to buy a single thing I tell you. I'm only recommending it. As you can see here, these sales kind of look shredded. Maybe like DA sales? Mm-hmm. Let's say you're broke, right? Broken game, not broke IRL. You have no gold, but you have money. Buy these. They will help you see much better. Oh, look. Another one. Torn. Maybe not in the same way the other ones were. But look, you can just see straight through that, 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 that. You know, you know what I mean? These are good. The Cutthroat Cannon Flare. Let me tell you. This Cannon Flare is so good, it's practically like you don't even have a flare. Like, it's... I mean, you obviously have the flash of the cannon, but then instantly that goes away. Because this flare. If you had to buy three items from the Emporium... Even two, you don't need to buy two sets of sails, you can just buy one. I'd buy one of those sails, and this cannon flare. Easy wins right there. This next tip is going to revolve around which ways you should angle your mast or sail on a sloop, depending on the wind condition. And as you can see here, the wind is going straight against me, and the best way to get speed in this situation, if you're being chased, if you're chasing someone, is by angling your sail forward. And now, I often see this a lot with people that are using a sloop, and that they think that if the wind is like maybe a little to the side like this, you want to angle your sail to the right to get more speed. And this is actually not the case. You want to keep your sail straight in front of you, all the way up until you know you can get side wind, and you can get wind in your sail. You will actually go faster with your sail straight forward than you will to the right without wind. As you can see here, I'm going slow right now because I don't have wind. As I said that, I get wind. But that little instance, you want to have your sail straight ahead of you until you get wind. But I'll, I'll turn to show you what I mean. So right now, you know, you're getting more speed than you normally would. And now as I'm slowly losing wind like I am now, as I keep turning left, you want to start angling your sail straight. Just angle your sail straight all the time unless you have wind, is my tip. And now this is another tip I'm going to go over, um, even though I'm on a sloop currently, and that is ranking the ships from fastest to slowest, and depending on the wind condition. Now let's say I'm going, there's a brig behind me, and then behind that brig there's a galleon. Alright, just imagine that in your brain. Right now, the brig will catch up to me and so will the galleon, but the brig will stay the fastest and they will it'll take off way ahead of both of us. The galleon will obviously, you know, go past me because they have three sails and they're faster than me, but the brig is by far the fastest with side winds. And now let's say you have more of a straightforward wind, right? The brig is still the fastest in the game, galleon is still very fast, but the brig and galleon's difference between their, you know, the speed gap or whatever between them 
is much, much smaller. And last but not least, if you are against wind, of course it goes the sloop, the brigantine, and the galleon. And now there's usually a lot of debate on which way you should angle your sails on a sloop, on a brigantine, and a galleon when you're against wind. Um, I see a lot of people angle them straight ahead, just like the sloop. I see a lot of people angle them to the side. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter. I believe, though, angling them straight ahead does make you faster, but it's not by a lot. It really doesn't matter on a galleon or a brig which way you angle your sails when you're against wind. It's really only on the sloop where it really matters, because that's where you're faster than everybody. This next tip is going to be actually about Hunter's Call. Now, as you can see here, I'm fishing inside of a fort, actually, and let's say you want to finish, you know, your Pondies commendations, or maybe even just fishing in general, and get to level 50. Fishing inside of a fort actually gets both of those done really quickly, because as you can see here, once I'm done fishing, I reel in the fish in one go. If you have, you know, two, three, even four people sitting here fishing with you, you will skyrocket through both the commendation for fishing Pondies and selling them, and for fishing in general. The fort also has four pans for cooking, so it's really the best place to fish for pondies. This next tip also revolves around forts, and it also revolves around getting supplies too. Now, let's say you don't feel like doing the fifth tall tale, getting all those supplies, and maybe you don't even have it unlocked, and that's the reason why. I have a solution for you. Forts alone, okay, so I guesstimated these numbers, so if I'm wrong, I apologize, but I'm probably not off by much. They give you at least 150 cannonballs. They give you over 300 pieces of food, most of them being bananas, which sucks, but either way, you get an un ungodly amount of food. Uh, you get 50 planks. You can fish. You can also get fish in barrels. You can get cooked food like chicken and pork. And you can also get loads of pineapples too. Like just running around the fort, going from barrel to barrel, I maybe found you know eight or nine pineapples just laying there. It is truly one of the best ways to get supplies if you do not have the fifth Pirates Life Tall Tale unlocked. And I would completely recommend doing it. Now for this second to last tip, I figured I'd just go over this cursed cannonball because I feel like it can be used much better if a lot of people know how to use it properly, and that is the ballast ball. Now sadly, I don't have one on me because, you know, finding one is like finding a box of wondrous secrets you're never gonna, or the shroud of ghosts, like, I feel like I never see them for some reason. Either way, I'm gonna explain their effects on each boat because I think people often misunderstand their purpose and what they actually do. Now on a sloop, let's say we have four holes down here, we have two holes here, we have two holes here, right? They're both filling in with water, etc. If you shoot a ballast ball at me, nothing is going to happen here. They're going to keep spewing in the same amount of water. Nothing's going to change. Let's say we have four holes back here, right? We got two over here, two over here. Now, if I get ballast balled in the fight, these holes are just going to fill up with water. They're going to spew in loads of water, way more than they normally would, because normally it would only fill in water whenever waves go over them. Whereas, if someone uses a ballast ball on me, it's going to act like I'm completely underwater, and every single hole in my boat is going to fill up with water. Now, let's change this scenario to a brick. If you're on a brig, a couple holes back here, a couple holes at the front, maybe a hole or two on the side, and you get ballast balled, nothing will change. If you have a ballast ball, do not use it on a brig. If anything, all it'll do will scare the enemies if they don't know that a ballast ball won't do anything. You know, they think it'll, you know, destroy their ship or something. That's all it'll do. It'll put fear in your enemies' minds if they don't know what they're doing. So, on a brigantine, it does nothing. Now on a galleon, is where a ballast ball becomes OP. Now let's say you and your crew are the type of people that, you know, don't feel like repairing mid-deck holes. It's a waste of planks. How did anyone do it? I'm about to tell you why you should do it, right? Now let's say, right, you got four holes below. You're slowly filling up. They're all grade ones. Someone decided to shoot chain shots at the bottom of your boat. They don't know what they're doing, right? You're not worried, but you have loads of tier three holes up top. Now that random noob sloop shoots out a ballast ball, you're sunk. Every single one of those grade three holes is now spewing out water as if you just scuttled your boat and you sink. On a galleon, a ballast ball is devastating if you don't repair your mid-deck holes. If you do repair your mid-deck holes, you're fine, you know? No big deal. Nothing changes, you know? This is like a brigantine. You know, a ballast ball won't do anything as long as you don't have any holes up here. But the easiest way to counter a ballast ball is just repairing all your goddamn holes. Just get them all repaired. Now the final tip for this video. <laughs> Whether you watched through the whole video or you just got here, I'm here to show you how to sink a boat without a boat. As with fire. Now, fire can obviously sink a boat pretty well, but it depends where you place the fire on how quickly it will sink the boat. As you can see, the fire back here made all these holes back here. Now, the only reason I'm not sinking right now is because I'm out first and I'm not moving, but if you're out in the middle of the ocean and you know, your boat sank and the only way to sink the other boat you're fighting is with fire, these holes will be constantly filling up. And now as the fire just sits here, it's going to put these grade 1 holes into grade 2 and then grade 3, and then they're just going to spew in so much water, it's going to sink the enemy so quickly. Same thing on a brigantine. Fire back here, 
They'll create holes and the water will flow in. Now, since the brigantine is flatter than the sloop, you know, there isn't like two decks below deck. Um, even if you're staying still at an outpost, the water will just continuously flow in. Unlike the sloop where the water will only come in if you're on waves, not still water. Now, galleon is where it becomes complicated because, of course, it wouldn't be a trick if it wasn't complicated. Now, this doesn't exactly work on a galleon because, you know, you could throw fire anywhere down here and it'll give you a hole, but the second water starts filling in, all the fire is going to go out. So you'll have, just have a single grade one hole right here, spoon in water, take maybe three hours to sink your boat, you know, so. I would really only recommend doing it on a brig or a sloop, um, but if you're on a galleon, just throw fire everywhere, just cause pandemonium, because if anything, it's going to take you quite a long time to sink. What you can do, though, is try and get that grade one to fill up and then get it to second deck and then have second deck just completely on fire and have all the holes everywhere and it'll just fill up really quick from the second deck holes instead of just the singular grade one hole. Now, of course, I want to thank every single person for watching, whether you watched the whole thing like a psychopath or you skipped around to each tip that you wanted to watch. Either way, thank you all for watching this video, however many do. Um, if any of you want me to go in depth on any specific tip, just let me know and I will gladly do it. I'm down for anything. Just let me know. Thanks for watching.